We got a special edition of Swish today with some incredible panelists, starting with Miranda I am, who is a three-time Olympian with Team Canada Basketball, of course. She is now the founder of also Cultivate Co. And then beside her, we got Hannah Hall, who is also the manager of partnerships at Layup Basketball and a former D1 basketball player herself at University of Buffalo. You're also very familiar with the international game of basketball, having previously represent Canada as well. And then of course, last but not least, of course, we got Haley McGoldrick, who is a writer at Sportsnet and a content creator, sorry, the lead content creator for Team Canada for the Paris Olympics. So let's dive right on in. It took me everything to not want to green room this as, you know, talk behind the scenes. I want to get straight into the excitement of Paris and just your thoughts, starting with you, Miranda, about what you saw from Team Canada. Obviously, they didn't have the best showing at the Olympics. They went 0-3 in the group phase. They had some challenges. But what did you see out there? That's the thing about the Olympics. You really never know what's going to happen. You're on the global stage. There's a lot going around the tournament itself. So obviously Team Canada is a little bit disappointed by their results. We always are, despite what happens. I love what I see, but overall, just watching some of the games between those teams, there were some nail biters. There was a lot of excitement. I'm sure we're gonna get into some of that today. Yeah, I mean, similar to what Miranda said, I think it's just an exciting time for can Canadian sports, especially on the women's side, to see young talent out there doing what they can do. Like, we can be nothing but excited for what's to come. Um, and I mean, we were gritty the whole time. Yeah, we didn't come up with what we wanted to in the end, but there was no short of passion, no short of heart out there. And I think that's something that we can hold on to. So, Yeah, and I think the biggest thing, if you're going to take something away from it, in the group were the Olympic silver medalists and the Olympic bronze medalists in yeah. Australia and France. So it's not like Canada had an easy group to come out of. They had a really, really strong group. So Canada really had one of the toughest groups coming into this. And of course, they wanted to be on that podium or at least even make the knockout stage. But credit to them that they had to play two medalists in their group coming into this. But like kind of focusing the lens more on Canada, where do you feel like the next steps for this group is and how do you feel like they can improve for the 2028 LA Olympics? Yeah, like Hannah mentioned, we actually have a lot of young talent coming up through the ranks. So that's something I'm really excited about. It's going to be a bit of a transition, as it always is, as you're going from one Olympics to the other, depending on what happens next. But one thing that Canada always does is reflect. Reflect on what has happened, make the appropriate changes. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, and you got to be committed to the long term. This isn't a, a one-year, one-and-done kind of process, and then we're going to be get, getting ready to go. we got to commit to the process and also have young people who I think they are ready to commit to the program for the long haul. Yeah, I mean, the process is everything, and I think we've showed a lot of growth in the past few years. There's been a ton of changes in Canada basketball in the past few years too. Mm. So now it's it's about patience and it's about continuing to grow step by step. Like Miranda said, the Olympics is not for the weak of heart. Like you really have to be in it for the long run and be able to see yourself in a place from four years from now. So I think we're on the right track. Um, we have people like Silas Swords who are young, incredible talent that are going to do am amazing things. And then we have new vets that are going to be in place by 2028 that are gonna be special as well, so. Let's talk about Nalia Chama real quick because this is a colleague of mine near dear to my heart. Um, she was an inspiration to me when I was playing basketball, that's for sure, growing up. Um, but what does she mean to you guys individually in her playing career? Cause you know, she's a Olympian, a WNBA player, and more, most importantly, like a Canadian representing her country so well. I mean, first and foremost for me, she was a, a teammate and Often on the team, we call ourselves sisters <laughs> with an A. <laughs> Um, because once you grind together with someone that hard, blood, sweat, tears, the struggle, the pain, the victory, all of that, you have a deeper connection with these these girls, these these women. And I have seen that progression for, for Nat as coming in, one of the youngest to ever make our national team, yeah. and to grow and develop into the person and player that she is today has been really, really fun to watch. And I'm excited to see what she does next. I mean, she truly just embodies everything that a leader is even in these olympics you saw in that first game canada had a lot of turnovers and you know it was kind of like we need somebody who's a bit of a more confident ball handler mm -hmm. and that was that person she's somebody who she can just do everything on the court it doesn't matter she has that confidence she's somebody that everyone looks up to watching from afar she's so inspiring and she's such a tough player and i know that these olympics didn't go the way she wanted but she truly left 
everything she could on that court. What an incredible athlete um, she is. Absolutely. So tons of Olympic action, of course, outside of just Canada. So let's dive right on into it. The gold medal game was pretty exciting. Haley, I'm gonna start with you. What did you see from Team USA, France, and all the medalists? Yeah, I think obviously USA basketball, like they really, you know, eight time gold medalists, like it really, they've set the standard of what women's basketball is. And they have WNBA players across their roster. It's really hard to compete. I think that's the biggest thing too when you look at Canada basketball versus USA basketball that a lot of these players, Sabrina Nescu and Brianna Stewart get to play together every day. Asia Wilson and Kelsey Plum get to play together every single day. And so just the chemistry they have is unmatched. You saw Asia Wilson out there. She is, you know, the front runner for the WNBA MVP for a reason. Just the talent across the board on that team is unreal. But you have to give credit to France. As I said before, Gabby Williams, she's unreal. She used to play for the Chicago Sky. She's not on a WNBA roster right now, but she's an incredible talent. She was putting up for France every single game during that tournament. France is an amazing basketball country, and I think just because they don't have a lot of WNBA names that people kind of just have them under the radar, mm -hmm. but they're so, so talented. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if USA Basketball had prepared completely for what France was going to bring to the table. And so it was such an exciting game. The fact that it really came down to a buzzer beater that was hit, but just Gabby Williams' foot was on the line, which oh. I'm sure is heartbreaking <laughs> for her. But it was such an incredible game. And I think that's the biggest thing is that so many people expected USA Basketball to just run away with it by 40 points. Mm -hmm. And they didn't, and they're realizing that the rest of the world is kind of catching up to the standard that they've set. Okay, okay, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Brian, what did you say? Yeah, I would say, not that I called the results of that game or the ending of that game, but I wasn't so much surprised because I did play in France. For I was eight just going to say, you played there. So I'm intimately aware of all of those players and just the essence, the culture, like you mentioned, of basketball in France. And I'd just like to highlight obviously, America is a basketball country. They have the population, they have the money, they have the programs, all of that to feed into a dominant national team. All right, guys, jumping into this one. In your opinion, what holds more weight, an Olympic gold medal or a WNBA championship? Yeah, that's that's a tough one. I think for me, with experiences playing for the national team and just having that feeling of wearing Canada across your chest and not being able to really explain it, um, there's just like this sense of pride when you're playing for something that's bigger than yourself. And I think mm -hmm. for me, it's always going to be the Olympic medal. It's how I fell in love with the game and how I kind of used it as an aspiration to keep going. There's nothing greater than like representing your country. Yeah, you definitely have to give credit where credit is due. The WNBA is currently a powerhouse, one of the strongest leagues in the world. So just the sheer talent that's required to win a title like that, definitely worthy of all of the accolades that come with it. Obviously my perspective is from, from playing with Team Canada and also playing overseas and knowing how many, like you mentioned, how many unsung heroes, unseen talent mm -hmm. is in mm -hmm. France, Spain. So, so much talent left on the playing field. But like Hannah said, my, my goal for the last 10 years of my career was to medal for Team Canada. I know that I'm playing for something bigger than myself. And mm. I think that gets to the heart of human realization, potential purpose. Yeah. When that meaning, mm -hmm. um, the value of that tugs on the heart a little bit more than playing for a paycheck yeah. can ever do. Yeah. True. Yeah. That's a bar right there. Tons of talent, of course, showcased at the Olympic Games. We're talking about the WNBA, so let's talk about the second half, the final stretch of the WNBA season. Don't know about you guys, I'm so excited. I'm gonna start with you. Um, give me your thoughts on what you saw from the Olympics that will maybe even make you excited for the second half of the season. I'm just very excited, biasly, to see our Canadian athletes go back. I'm really excited to see Bridget go back to Minnesota and just do her thing. I think mm. to be able to play on an Olympic stage Yes, she had a little bit of disappointment, but Minnesota's first half of the season was incredible. So I think going into that second half will be really special. Um, from a USA perspective, I think Sabrina Nescu had to really fight to have that position. And to be a point guard for a team like USA at that age is very special. So I'm excited to see how she takes that international 
competition and brings it back to, to the Liberty. I think there's a lot to look out for coming out of these Olympics. A lot of talent that was shown that maybe doesn't get the spotlight all the time. Even like a Kelsey Plum, she's an incredible player, but just when you play alongside Asia Wilson, because Asia Wilson is just such a dominant player, she takes up the headlines, deservedly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Kelsey Plum getting a little bit more of her flowers and things like that. So yeah. I'm just very excited to see the competition because, you know, coming into the season, the Aces were the favorites to three-peat. Yep. And then it kind of faltered and the Liberty kind of moved up. And now and you're seeing... Sun. And the Sun, of course, Alyssa yep. Thomas. Alyssa Thomas is yeah. a gold medalist with Team USA as well. So seeing a lot of that. As Hannah said, the links as well, seeing how the links are going to come yeah. back out of this break. So I think there's a lot to look forward to in the second half of the season. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for your thoughts and perspectives, of course, on the Olympic. I appreciated having you. I'm Savannah Hamilton. Thanks for watching. Be great.